First up, we've got a question from Joey. It's a spicy current events one. Are mm. you ready for this? All right. The U.S. dollar doesn't seem as dominant as it once was. And with China's economy potentially overtaking ours, I'm worried about investing so heavily in U.S. stocks. Is the dollar on its way out? And should we go heavier in international stocks? What do you think? Yeah, Joey, this is an interesting one. And this seems to be uh, commanding a lot of headlines right now, right? There's, there's conversations around world currency and people you know, pulling out of contracts and what's going to be the base currency and all that sort of thing. And here's what makes me nervous about you know, these big seismic shifts that people think that could happen. Uh, while something could take place and it could have long-term impacts, the amount of time that it takes for that to actually manifest is significant. It takes a long time for that to take place. And you have to ask yourself, all right, when I'm investing, when I'm going out and buying, what am I making a choice on? Like I'm saying, okay, I want to go out and work and I'm going to go trade my time doing my vocation for a few dollars. And then I'm going to take those dollars and I'm going to go buy a product. I'm use Coca-Cola because that's what Warren Buffett says. And I'm going to exchange some of my dollars for Coca-Cola. Well, that Coca-Cola came to me because someone else was willing to sacrifice their time to be able to put together the recipe and mix the ingredients and make the can and put it all together. And so really when I'm investing, I'm saying, hey, I think Coca-Cola is going to continue doing that. Now, inside of that equation, at at the very highest, 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 highest level, uh, currencies and, and, and that sort of thing doesn't come into the equation we're talking about a really interesting globalized economy with with which we live. So uh, I'd be curious to know your thought on this, Brian, but I worry that too many people right now are putting too much emphasis on it, not recognizing that when you're trying to make these shifts on your portfolio allocation, what are you really shifting away from and what are you really shifting towards? And is it actually having the impact that you think it's going to have in your portfolio. Well, I, I can tell you the, the the current events that Joey's referencing is that, because it, it is somewhat alar- alarming, when you find out that because of the conflicts that are, that are occurring, that you see China, Russia kind of starting to unite on some things, and then you find out that, that the, the Saudi Arabia was having discussions with China, and then you find out that Brazil just signed something with, in Argentina, with, with China, and, and then you find out that there was a headline. I didn't read into it to see what was going on, but it was saying that Japan was actually going to break some of the, the trading stuff to buy fuel from Russia. And you're like, whoa, what, what, what the heck What's is going, going on? on? And that stuff is alarming when you see it. But, I, but let me bring it back because I always have to say, be careful what you when you think with your emotions because you can get yourself mm-hmm. in a lot of trouble because – um, and, and Bo knows this. I do a fine balance of trying to say, is this a concern? And is this concern, it, 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 could it be also leading to and creating a blind spot mm-hmm. in vi- my investment life where I'm letting the, the – because remember, the news media does not care about your wallet or your purse or your, your retirement savings. They're just trying to get your eyes Eyeballs, and ears, and they, they, they scare the heck out of you. So let me, let me take this in two parts, Joey. First of all, you should know – Pulling just everything out of the U.S. because you're worried about it is not an ideal strategy because the the U.S. is already an automatic diversified investment. That's why it's a good anchor investment because realize last time I looked into this, now this might be updated now more or less, I'm not sure, but last time I looked into it, 40% of the S&P 500's money flowing in, earnings coming in, revenue coming in from, from operations was from global operations, meaning that if you think about a lot of the brands that you look at that are part of the S&P 500, these are brands that not only operate in the United States, but they actually operate all over the world. So you're not, even when you buy the S&P 500, you're, you are picking up a big portion of international business operations as well. The second thing is I actually went, because I always say, hey, ground yourself, Brian, let's look at the data. And there was a great visual. I don't know. I don't. We don't have it for today's show, but it was something I told Daniel. We probably ought to cover at some point. But it, it helped ground me because still the United States, the dollar was right under sixty percent of like the global reserve mm-hmm. currency. The euro was in second place with like twenty percent, right under twenty percent, and then everything else was kind of a small, sma- a, 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 you know, spread out at three percent, five percent, and so forth. But still, the, the America is still the global currency um, that, that a lot of people use. You can still go to a lot of countries, I and mean, you 
tip them in a dollar or give them a five dollar bill. They're gonna love it. But but there are some trends that you need to be aware of because I think that with the way our Federal Reserve and our government runs with we don't we don't have gold anymore, you know, <laughs> guaranteeing the value. There does need to be some caution from our um, from our leadership and just making sure that they're, that they're keeping that in check. So I, I will keep watching it, Joey, but I'm also I'm counting on that great, big, beautiful tomorrow where innovation, the ever expanding and accelerating desire of mankind to to innovate and grow is, is still going to get us through this. And, and don't let the, the the media pull you off the track of saving and investing and being a part of that future success. And you have to make the decision, what variables are you trying to control for? I'll, I'll use a really simple example. You think about like Apple, right? Apple and the products that they make are bought all over the world. You, as an investor, when you're thinking about, okay, I want to be an investor, I want to hold Apple stock as an investment, that's a decision you're making. You're kind of counting on Apple to figure out, okay, if we're going to trade in global markets, I'm going to handle all the currency stuff. I'm going to handle all the fluctuations. I'm going to handle all that risk. And you're trusting the management at Apple to do that. When you're an investor, you have to decide, as an investor, what factors am I going to control and what factors am I going to let the things that I'm investing in control? Just like you wouldn't go in and tell them how to run the assembly line to make the iPhones, you have to figure out, okay, where do I want to weigh in on my allocation decisions and where am I comfortable not weighing in on my allocation decisions?